hand and Lady Ada had something called, I think, Minty Boost. I was going to call it Minty Pwn, but I, I was like, nah, I don't like that name so much. Not to mention, I don't want to be like in on uh, Lady Ada's territory. Um, if you don't know who Lady, Lady Ada, Ada is, she does a whole lot of really cool electronics projects. And go check out her website. Then I thought, well, I'm using dips switches usually to um, set what program I want to run off the system. So maybe I'll just call it the dipstick. And that name was what I used for a while. But then I really wanted something that was more descriptive. So I thought programmable head USB keyboard mouse dongle. Because that's exactly what this thing is. But that's a little bit long to say. That's a mouthful. So maybe we can abbreviate it. Okay. Let's go ahead and make an acronym for that. Hmm. Programmable head USB keyboard dongle. Fucked. <laughs> that works for me and that stuck. So I had to look around for something to actually um, build this with. And I'd seen all sorts of stuff out there. I'd seen the, the direct AVR code that was uh, mentioned before. I'd seen ways of doing it with a normal Arduino board. But it was extra circuitry. Not to mention the Arduinos, while they're not huge, the official hardware is a little bit bigger than I wanted. So I did some Googling around and I found the Tensi. Now the Tensi is really, really small. And I'm trying to uh, come up to me after, the, the, uh, after this after the, in the question section and I'll show you one. But the itty bitty little tiny things. Basically everything you see above the wolf's head and below the USB adapter, that's all the Tensi. There's not much to one. So you can fit them in just about anything. Like 1.2 by 0.7 inches. Uh, it's got a little AVR processor, runs at 16 megahertz. It's programmable in assembly, C, or the Arduino dev package. How many people here have ever used Arduino? All right. For those who haven't, Arduino is nifty. Essentially, it's more or less, and someone who's a bigger Arduino developer might correct me on this, but it's kind of like a set of wrappers around C++ that get rid of some of the uh, more complex things of the language and make it very easy for um, hobbyist programmers and people like to mess around with electronics and uh, digital art projects to deal with. There's also a version that's $27 that has a uh, more onboard storage and so forth. And by onboard storage, I mean program storage. There's ways you can use it as like a USB flash drive, but I'll go into why that has its problems in a bit. The best thing about the Tensi is it has built in USB support. I don't need anything extra. So I was good to go. You can get those from uh, pjrc.com. By the way, if anybody orders one from listening to this talk, tell them I'm Geek sent you. Sometimes he sends me free demo hardware that I can play with. Uh, here's the basic specs of both the Tensi and the Tensi++. Uh, generally for most things, you just go send to keystrokes the Tensi. 2.0 by itself is enough. If you need a little bit more uh, room for payload, look into the Tensi plus plus 2.0. But either one will work fine for you. It also depends on how many uh, analog inputs you need and so forth, uh, and uh, maybe pulse width modulation you need. And I'll go a little bit into that. That glowing effect you saw earlier, that's caused by be using uh, PWM is pulse width modulation. Simply, essentially, what it's doing is it's turning on and off. Um, a particular connection on the chip really fast. And uh, based on how fast you turn it on and off, you can basically make the, the uh, LED dimmer or brighter. And I have like three of them going in there, one for uh, red, one for green, one for blue, so I can simulate any color I want. And currently I just have it fading through different colors. I'll go a little bit more into analog in here shortly. Here is a, a simple schematic of some of the uh, fucked devices I made. And all you basically see is a set of dip switches one side going to ground, so I'm kind of using negative logic to where if it goes to ground, I'm considering it turned on. It just happened to be easier to wire that way. And depending on whether or not a dip switch is uh, set or not, I can uh, choose what I have the tendency to do. I, that way I can basically have multiple payloads all on one thing. I don't have to reprogram it every single time I plug into a different machine. But let's say you have um, an eight position dip switch. That gives you 256 possible different programs you can run. That's pretty nifty. Now the other thing you might see here is I have a symbol for a photoresistor and a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Now here's the way a photoresistor works. Essentially when light hits it, it gets lower in resistance. How many people here knows Ohm's law? E over IR. Uh, this is the crowd for that. Uh, essentially what happens whenever that voltage or whenever the resistance drops on that photoresistor because more light hits it, its resistance lowers so more voltage is actually dropped across that 10K resistor. Well, you see that little line going off in the middle off to, uh, I believe, pin number well, 10? That's when the analog ends. It can measure that voltage change. And so by doing that, I can tell how much light is in a room. And I'll show you how I use that here shortly. 
basically this is a better description of uh, how that analog pin bit works. Essentially it's measuring the amount of re voltage by comparison to reference voltage. Let's say my reference voltage is 5 volts and it's getting 5 volts dropped across that resistor. Well, it's going to read approximately 1023. However, if it's 0 volts, it's going to run read 0 and anywhere in between. So I can use that basically as the basis for knowing how much light there is. But I don't have to use a photoresistor. I could also use a thermistor so I can do it by temperature and so forth. Part of the idea of doing all this is I can have my payload automatically fire off whenever the light levels in the office re reach a certain level. And we'll show some of that during the demo. Oh, Tensi code. Everybody can read that, right? <laughs> I've seen some hideous slideshows. Now I know I'm, I'm a bit on the verbose side with all the stuff I put in my, co in my uh, slides, but that's because I want to provide tons of links and more information for people who want to look at them later. We're going to break this down into smaller chunks. All right, here's the header section. Now one of the things I've done is create what I call the fucked lib. Essentially, it's a bit of a pain in the butt to use the direct um, USB keyboard functionality in the Tensi, so I simplified it somewhat. Essentially here in my header section, I uh, create a couple variables. I initialize some. I make sure I set photo read to zero. And I set my dip switches and say which dip switch is which pin on the physical Tensi device. This uh, dip options, that's basically just something I use as a comment that I can make a uh, dump out whenever I need it to because right, on these tensies, if I have like a nine position uh, dip switch, I'll forget which dip uh, setting does what. So essentially I use the little button as a diagnostic tool. I press it and it tells me which dip uh, selection does what particular, particular functionality. And I use dip options for that. Uh, here's the setup routine. Basically it's just going iterating through telling each pin what it wants to, it to do. And that minimum weight thing is just me setting up uh, the program to wait a certain number of minutes. In this case, I'm actually not using the dip switch to say what program to run, but to set the number of minutes to wait in binary. But if you're familiar with C or C++, this is essentially the same thing but a little bit easier because of the Arduino wrappers uh, obfuscating some of the more complex issues involved in those languages. What is that? Training wheels. Hey, if they help. As long as it don't become a crutch. I feel like I would have been a much better programmer if I hadn't learned basic first. <laughs> it kind of makes you lazy for all future coding. But then we eventually have the uh, actual payload inside the loop. This is basically the thing that gets done over and over and over again. Think of it as your uh, main function. Uh, in this particular one, it delays a little bit of time after it, uh, the conditions are met. And what it ends up doing is it uses my library, which has something called command at run bar and it runs this command. That's a really simple Windows command. Everybody knows that one, right? Let me break it down for you. Essentially it opens up command exe, does a for loop looking through ev the output of the WMIC command. The WMIC command that's inside of all that junk is looking for a disk that's a USB disk. What it does then is it gets that output, finds out which disk has a certain label, in this case my thumb, because w basically when you plug in a thumb drive, you don't necessarily know for sure on a, on a victim system uh, what drive letter it's going to get. That first part finds out that drive letter for you. Then it fires off a script off of that drive letter. Trust me, it all works. This part I believe is in the slides you have. Try it out, trust me, it seems to work pretty well. And this way you don't have to code in, go to a certain drive to run something or copy stuff to a certain drive because you're not going to know what drive it is until you actually plug it in you can use this little bit of scripting to find it by its volume label. And uh, it does its thing and it shrinks down the current window. That's right after the delay 10. The delay 10 basically means delay 1000 milliseconds, so one second. Uh, in the fucked library, I've implemented a few different commands. One is command at run bar and then whatever operating system. I haven't done OS 10 yet. That's why the X is there. That could be either MS Windows or it could be uh, Linux and GNOME. Uh, same thing for uh, shrink current window. Basically the idea is you can fire something off the run and then you shrink the window so they don't necessarily see what you got going on in the background. Uh, press and release. Essentially this makes it a little bit easier to say take this one key, press it several times. If you want to get around in Windows and if you like open up a web browser and want to do something to someone's account someplace, Generally it's best to get away around with key presses rather than mouse events. 
So you can use this to like hit tab, 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 tab to get whatever field you actually need to get to. All right. Show dialog. Uh, essentially this function just uh, sends diagnostic information out. Uh, I use this for uh, debugging my programs. Essentially it reads through the pins, tells me what the current value is, also tells me um, what dip settings I have for which particular pre-made payloads, all those sorts of things. And dips options is that uh, variable I mentioned before that actually gets printed out by uh, show options. By, uh, sorry, show dialog. Uh, a few other things I have implemented in there. Another uh, thing is I have something called LED keys. This particular uh, function basically just tells you which um, lock keys are down. For instance, scroll lock, caps lock, or uh, num lock. And see, the thing, next thing about this is there's not a whole lot of communication that comes back from the computer to the keyboard. But especially if I start doing things on this one keyboard and this and this is a separate entity completely. Uh, however, whenever you use caps lock, scroll lock, or num lock, that message gets sent to everybody. So you can do what's uh, I sometimes refer to as like a caps lock trap. Basically, you turn on caps lock to be annoying using your Tensi, and you know someone's at the station whenever they turn caps lock back off, and you can detect that with the Tensi. And you can use LED keys for that, or I have a couple of little um, uh, Boolean functions that basically say is num lock on, is caps lock on, is scroll lock on. So basically all my stuff there is just to make it more convenient to create these fuck devices. Um, if you want more information on this, tomorrow uh, Dave Kennedy, also known as Relic, and Josh Kelly, also known as uh, Winfang, are going to be giving a presentation on PowerShell and they're going to go into some more advanced things you can do with a Tensi. So th they're doing some more complex things than what we're showing here. For example, I think they have some kind of like reverse shell they do out of PowerShell. So it should be pretty nifty. All right, setting up the development environment. It is incredibly simple to set up. Let me go ahead and start this up. Hopefully this plays correctly. Uh, essentially I've already downloaded the Arduino environment. Also uh, Paul, the guy who makes the Tensies, um, has his own little special extra libraries and hardware specifications you have to put into the Arduino uh, folder. So once you zip all those out together, you pretty much will have a working programming environment. The first thing I have to do right here is I have to install a driver for serial. Sometimes people um, ask me if you need a driver installed for the fuck to work. No, you don't. However, to program it, sometimes you do. So I'm installing this just so I can program it. This driver is not needed on the victim machine just for the sake of setting up my development environment. Also, I'm going into the device manager to find out what COM port it is. That just makes it easier for me uh, to do diagnostics and uh, set things up. Eventually, I'm going to find out the COM port so I can uh, set up my Arduino environment. For some reason, I think I had to install that driver twice to actually make it function. And eventually it works. Okay. After I've got all that done, I've already unzipped my Arduino environment. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think the next thing I did was I go into lib and I put in my, I'm sorry, the Tensi loader. That's an extra EXE you can download from Paul's site. Essentially it's used for programming the Tensi. After you install it, essentially you can just um, press the button that's on the Tensi itself, that little black button you saw in some of the pictures, and it would know to automatically load code from the machine. Also right here, I'm putting um, the Arduino extra uh, hardware specifications and pointing it towards my Arduino development folder so it knows uh, what kind of board I have. With the Arduino environment, you can program for a lot of different microcontrollers that are based around Arduino. The, Ar the main Arduinos, uh, there's like several different generations and uh, a couple of different types of tensies and whatnot, which is why you have to install that so it knows about your hardware. At this point, I'm actually going to take my li library, which is downloadable from my website, and copy it into the libraries folder. And it actually comes along with some examples so that you can look at them and see how to do some of the stuff I'm going to be showing here shortly in the demo. 
At this point, whenever I want to actually program the Tensi, I just have the Tensi 